So, you know, my usual practice is Monday is my day off. So I'll take Pluto Dog to Camp Bow Wow up in Shelby Township, which is really pathetic because all the young ladies there have become his personal slave girls. I mean, it's, you walk in and, uh, can I take care of Pluto, please? <laughs> this dog owns the world. Well, anyway, so I'll take him up to Camp Bow Wow, and then I come back and I look at, I go up to my study in my apartment and I look at the gospel for the first time for the next week. And I just look at it so I know what it is. And I'm always hopeful this is going to be the week, the upbeat gospel, the gospel that makes us all happy. You know that feeling of happiness after you pummeled Penn State for heavens knows how many weeks in a row. So I'm sitting there and I'm waiting for a happy gospel. And then I see this one. And it's a tough gospel. It's a very tough gospel. And he uses this analogy, as all things Jesus did, intentionally. Notice how the door is locked. Probably the most important words, other than the last line of the gospel. And the last line stay alert. Be ready, for we neither know the time or the day. And that is so true for all of us, for all of us. I see so many familiar lovely faces in here today. The funerals of their loved ones I have presided at. The going to visit their loved ones I see you in the emergency room, in a hospital room. None of us are ever ready to say, okay, Lord, today's my day, I'm ready. It doesn't work that way. We don't know the time or the day. And the Lord knew this, and the Lord knew that life would go this way for us. And it's important that all of us take the Lord on his word. He never lies to us. Be alert. Stay awake, be ready. We need no neither the time nor the date. In the past 15 days, I think I've had 11 funerals. A 38 year old. Tomorrow on my day off, I'll take a few hours of duty and bury a 48 year old. We don't know the time or the date. Now, gospel should scare you. A lot of people get scared at this gospel. Don't get scared at this gospel. Because the Lord is there for us. And he's telling us that in this gospel. Yes, we are not infinite beings in the sense of our time on earth. But we are infinite beings. We live forever. And a whole lot of latitude is given to you and I on how we're going to live. Have you ever met a centurion, someone who's 100 years or older? It's pretty cool, isn't it? And you're, you're meeting more of as time goes by because Lipitor is becoming more and more powerful every year. And so all of us are going to hang around Dodge a little longer than we otherwise were going to. Thank heavens for And... This is fantastic. But if you ever meet a centurion, the first thing they'll tell you is, I'm waiting for him to call me. If it's a Catholic, they'll tell you that. I know my time is soon. And if they're a practicing Catholic, you'll see there's great comfort in their eyes. It's sort of like, this is great. I'm still alive. I still have family members. I, I have essentially said goodbye to all my friends. But, you know what? If he comes tonight, okay. There's this great peace about someone who's older. And you know, sometimes whenever I go to a hospital room, whenever I go to an ICU, whenever I'm in an emergency room, and Father Christopher and I are often called to do these things, Sometimes you see a look in the eyes of the person and they'll say, I really thought I'd see 80. 
I really thought I'd see 90. I really thought I'd see 100. It's all up to the Lord. You and I, all we can do is do exactly what the virgins, who were smart enough to bring their full lamps, we have to be ready to meet the Christ. Now, how do we do that? Well, on Wednesdays from 5 to 6, I sound like a Kmart commercial of old, and on Saturdays from 2.30 to, 445, to 3.45, one of us is in the box. If you regularly practice this wonderful sacrament of reconciliation, I got news for you. You got nothing to worry about. And I mean zippo, zilcho, nada. You're ready. And then it doesn't matter what the Lord does. But all of us, especially as time has gone by, have changed on this issue. When I was a little boy, my parents would march the Maxim kids out like little Marines every other Saturday. And we would march into church Saturday afternoon, and all five of us would be in the same pew. Mom, military dictator for life on the one end. Dad, constitutional monarch, but not prime minister on the other end. And there was no escape. And the five of us would go to confession. And our sins were, you know, popcorn for the priest, you know. I mean, it's like hearing the, the uh, confessions of second, their second graders in their first confession. If you ever want to know, I can't tell you what they say, but I can tell you, if you ever want to know what sitting down and having hot buttered popcorn thrown in your face feels like, that's what it's like to hear a second grader's confession. And so we would sit there and go to confession. And the church about this size would be full would be full on a Saturday there'd be four or five priests not one for Saturday duty just to keep up just to keep up and you could see the frantic looks in their faces it was terror those doors would slide so fast it was incredible. You know, four Hail Marys and our Father, go. <laughs> now, what has changed in our society? What's different now? The concentration on me. Me. This sense, this very Protestant sense of a personal God, and he is personal, who can deal with me personally and I don't need this church. I don't need the church personally founded by Jesus Christ whilst on earth to whom he told the first pope the sins you forgive shall be forgiven the sins you retain shall be retained. People don't know what that word means. It means they're not forgiven. And he gave mother church the power to forgive. He did this. No bishop, no pope, no priest. Jesus Christ did this. And so we have in our hands the greatest of all insurance policies. And all we got to do is pay the premiums. Now people, for whatever reason, are very afraid of confession. They're terrified. I don't know what you think I'm going to do to you in there. There is a wall and a cage and then if you want to go on the far side, you kneel and I can't even see you and have no idea who you are. And come on, neither me or Muir are doing anything terrible to you. And Father Dale, that's like going to confession to Smokey the Bear. <laughs> I mean, come on, give us a break. I can hear him saying it now. Only you can come in and apologize for your sins. I mean... So I say this to you because it is in our hands to answer the quandary of this gospel. 
We are given the tool to be forgiven. Now, this doesn't mean you run in every week to confession. But what it means is when you know you're outside the contours of Christ's way, when you've done something you know he doesn't want you to do, and we all do. I went to confession yesterday morning down with the caps. We all go, need to go to confession, all of us. I'm putting myself right at your side here. We go to the box. We just go to the box. The reason I talk about Father Dale is he's my usual confessor. It is like going to confession to Smokey the Bear, okay? So I really encourage you to grasp this wonderful gospel story where Jesus is using this parable to teach the people and his own apostles and say, hey, you have to come forward. You can't sit on your hands. This is the problem. And I can't tell you the number of families who do not bother to call a priest when their loved one is dying. It's like the same number of families that don't think people need funeral masses anymore. It's nuts. It's like the same number of people that wear people's ashes on necklaces. Even we know Christ has taught us we must go to the Holy Sepulchre. We must go to holy ground. As our souls go to God, our bodies wait for the end of time, and our souls and our bodies are rejoined. I cannot tell you the number of Catholics who do not understand this. I can't tell you the number of Catholics who think we're going to become angels. I got news for you. Your chance of becoming an angel are zero. Angels aren't human and never have been. They're not corporeal. You are corporeal. You and I will follow the same path that Jesus did. Jesus rose from the dead. You and I will rise from the dead. It's going to happen. And then we will rejoin our bodies after the end of the world. He was in the tomb for three days. We stay in the tomb for a lot longer. But our souls are with him and face immediate judgment. And by the way, it's never too late. Let's say your life hasn't been the best. Although I doubt that's the case for anyone in here. You probably wouldn't be in here. But let's say it hasn't been a rock star life. Let's say you're 96 and a half. You can still call the priest. Wipe the entire board clean. So all I'm trying to tell you, as Thanksgiving grows closer to us, as Advent, more importantly, grows closer to us, as this green, nauseating as it is, was about to turn into violet, yay. Oh, that was a Michigan State joke. It was kind of funny. <laughs> as we head into the new liturgical year, and we put on violet, and we're celebrating Advent together, and we're looking toward the hope of changing into gold at Christmas, and celebrating that wonderment and the magic and the majesty of Christmas. Take account of where your soul has been. And more importantly, where you think it might be going. And if you need to change course and speed, do it. Do it. Because we don't know. Stay awake. Be alert. We need, know neither the time nor the date. And you and I have the ability, all of us, to just come to the Lord. By the way, he does not want us to grovel. I know every one of the people in this church today, including myself, have been badly hurt by someone in their lifetime. Now imagine the badly hurt person running after the person that has hurt them getting on their hands and knees and begging them to accept their forgiveness. That's what God does for us. He's begging us to come to confession. Here I am waiting for you. Please come and see me. 
Can you imagine the level of arrogance involved if we say to that request to forgive us, I'm not interested. I don't need you. You know who goes to hell? People who don't think they need God. Hell is by definition the absence of God. The absence of God. At home, with nightly prayer at dinner, eating together, acting as a family, and then taking that, like my parents did, to church. Bringing your family to confession. Bringing your family together to Mass. That's the plan he gave for us. That's why the church does this. It's no bishop's idea. It's no pope's idea. We take it from Christ's message. So I ask all of you, all of you, reignite yourself. Remember when you took your child to be baptized, you promised you'd take them to Mass every weekend. If your grandchild isn't here today and you're a grandpa or a grandma, then do something about it. And remind your child, who's now an adult, that maybe it's time to go to the box and square things with Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.